Hi and welcome to the next in the series of videos which I've been doing on converting the Bruder toys to radio control. In this one I'm going to be looking at the tipping trailer which comes with the tractor in the set. Now the aim of this is going to be to get the bed to actually tip itself controlled by the vehicle in front and I could equally use any of the vehicles which I've done so far because they all come with the same hitch on the back for the trailer. Apart from the Sprinter, they've each got a third unused channel on their receivers which I could easily use to control this with. Whatever method I come up with would equally apply to this bed if it was installed onto the back of a Sprinter cab. Although I think that probably the way that I've configured the battery and the gearbox and everything, things will probably have to be moved around slightly differently. My intention is to break this video up into two parts. The first part is going to be looking at the mechanics of doing this and the second part will be thinking more about the electronics and the control. As with the previous videos, what I'm trying to do is to make sure that first of all I'm not using overly expensive components and secondly as far as possible trying to use techniques that most people have got available to them. The way that this trailer works is that you have this arm here which locks in position at the top giving you about a 45 degree tip here and, it's, and it slides along this channel here locking, if I can push it down, locking down at the other end. The bar here is hinged on the inside there and you've got a couple of little tabs here which this moves along inside a couple of channels there to stop it coming out. When I was thinking about how I might go about automating this I thought through a few options um, including the Fagelli or Actronics linear servos but they are like really expensive or even using a really powerful servo just to lift it up at the end and what I thought I would do instead of that is I bought some coach bolts the other day along with some nuts and I think that there must be some sort of way of mounting this in there with this turning and the screw moving backs and forwards and actually pushing this piece along. In order to power it I've got some of these little N20 motors with gearboxes and 3mm shafts on the end so I'm thinking that if I can somehow get that into the end there and perhaps put the mount motor and perhaps put the motor up here and and the coach bolt in this in this area here I can possibly automate it. Now I do know that that this gearbox is fairly highly geared and I think it only turns at about one revolution per second, about 60 res per minute. I'm gonna go ahead and use this because this is what I've got. If it all works and if I decide that actually it's too slow, I can always change this motor and gearbox for another one which runs faster. So without further ado, let's get started. I expect that there'll be some cutting that goes on, so I'll just take that out. So a quick test of this. That slides up and down there easily enough without particularly catching on these bits here. If I need to go back to it later, I will do. I might even have to get the Dremel in there, but we'll see. The next thing I want to do is I actually want the trailer to be able to tip up a bit more than the angle that it currently does. And what's stopping this at that end is you've got a couple of little bits in here, which I'm also going to trim out. As ever, been careful to keep the fingers out of the way. Getting out the final bit using one of these Dremel carbon blades. You really do need to get it quite clean in there. 
if you're going to get a smooth movement and that's actually going to give us a steeper tipping angle and the really nice thing is that there are still end stops at this end here stopping it going any further okay so the next thing that I want to think about is getting the coach bolt in there now coach bolts seem to come in a variety of lengths and I think that this is going to end up probably going it could go as far as here Yeah, actually thinking about it, I probably can use this shorter one. So, so the length seems to be about 90 mil of thread and up to the inside of the bolt about 97 millimeters. I guess this will be referred to as a four inch coach bolt. The next thing I want to do is get a hole drilled in here for the bolt to rest in. Seeing as my plan is to have these nuts moving up and down, the height at which the bolt needs to be mounted needs to be needs to be in line with the centre of these. So to do that I'm going to start off with the pilot hole as central as possible just using a one half millimetre bit and pin vise. I'm being quite careful about this because it's going to affect everything else. First of all going in with a small drill bit and then going in really carefully with an 8mm drill bit. I think that the angle here should be okay. So we do. I'm going to turn it slowly with a pair of pliers. The bolt seems to be resting in there with the nut in place and that seems to be quite happy. Having got this end sorted we now need to think about something to hold this end. With the flange butting up against this cross brace on the axle, it just about fits in the end and if, if um, I find it keeps jumping out I'll just get a longer bolt and then trim it down to a length where it's sticking in there enough. Right, so I just chopped off a little bit of plastic, it was kind of spare from the last build, the sprinter build if you've seen that, but basically I wanted a right angle piece of plastic, the width across the width across here is about 18 millimetres. The hole is an 8 millimetre hole. The centre of the hole is about 6 millimetres up from the bottom. And if you can see here, I put a couple of little notches in it and the bit in the middle is about 11 millimetres. And that is going to sit just in here. The place it's going to go is it's going to go in such a place as, first of all, it's kind of almost forming a washer up against this square bit of the bolt there and the bolt will be going flush against this cross beam on the chassis and the end of it just about goes into there. If this bolt was any shorter I'd have to use a longer bolt and I may still end up having to do that. Now in order to get the thing lined up I'm just going to put I'm just going to put a couple of these square nuts on because it'll be one of these which is going up and down. So I'll get one towards the back, about there, and then one at the other end, like so. Put the whole thing in for a moment. And that's where it's going to go. What I'm going to do in the first place is I'm going to glue this down. I'm probably going to go back and put a screw in as well just to keep it extra firm. But in the first place I'll glue it. We should in theory have the start of a mechanism for moving it backwards and forwards. One and a half millimetre hole. Right, that's not going anywhere. 
that's looking okay. Now the next thing that I want to do is to get a hole into the end of this so that the motor's got something to grip onto. This is the one part of the build that might not be that easy for people to do. I'm going to be using my lathe to drill this hole and even though the idea of these videos isn't for me to make things to sell to people, if there is a demand for it what I might do is I might perhaps make these bolts available on eBay or something but I'll see what the feedback looks like or maybe people find that they can drill these holes themselves using drill press or some other method but I'm going to use the lathe to make that hole. Having drilled that hole with the lathe, with the 3mm bit, that is now a perfect fit for the shaft coming out of the N20 motor. Looking to see where that comes, it's coming well past here, so I'm going to drill a 2.5mm hole here on one of these flat sides straight the way through, and then I'm going to tap it with an M3 tap, and then we'll be able to put a grub screw in to hold the shaft in place. Just carefully clean it out after the tapping. The motor still goes in nicely and keeping the flat on this side here. I put a grub screw in. That's all looking pretty good. Since the last bit of filming, I've been experimenting a bit and discovered a couple of things. First of all, the coach bolt actually needed to be a tiny bit longer. I had got it so finely adjusted that it was barely getting into the end part here. So I ended up cutting down a slightly longer coach bolt and you have to be careful that you don't use the thread at the end. Ideally, you have a nut further up so that it can come off and make its own thread. And also, if you're going to put this in the vise, you need to be really careful that you don't damage any of the thread because you want the nut to be able to slide up and down easily. So, I only added a small amount to it. So the original coach bolt was about 10 centimeters, 100 millimeters in length. And the one which I've replaced it with, in terms of an equivalent distance, so that's showing 105 millimeters. That extra 5mm is critical because when it's put in you can see how it actually comes into here a decent distance. Now the other thing which I did was I remade my little bracket here and that was because the 6mm which I initially drilled that I 6mm from the, from the base wasn't quite enough and the nut was lifting up as it came back so I re-drilled this one at something closer to five millimeters and actually the nut sits much flatter as it's going up and down. You need as far as possible to at least have the bolt being horizontally parallel to the, to the chassis as it goes along so that, the, so that there's a nice smooth movement and also left to right. You need to make sure that there's enough space on both sides for the nut to pass up and down easily. So having got that sorted, I was kind of happy with that. The other thing is that this three volt N20 motor really wasn't fast enough, turning at about um, one revolution per second you'd be waiting a long time for it to move up and down and also 3 volts maximum isn't ideal because it means that you would need to step down the voltage to get to that kind of level with whatever means you're going to do. Most of the available power, existing power, is either going to be around the 6 or 7 volts if you're, if you're, if you're running straight from a battery or 
or 4.8 to about 5 volts if you're going to be taking power from the receiver. So somebody was generous enough yesterday to give me a 6 volt N20 motor and this runs at about 200 revs a minute so it's it's about three times faster than the other one still plenty of torque and power and it's a much more convenient voltage i do tend to write on my motors what the voltage and the speed is if if i know them because these things can end up looking very identical in this particular case it isn't quite such a problem because you can see that the motor is much larger on the six volt motor the coach bolt was drilled with the three millimeter bit using the lathe to center it as I did with the first one and tapped and a grub screw put in there so this also fits in really nicely. The next thing which I need to think about is a way of mounting this so that it remains still and that nothing's under any strain and as it happens the bottom of this motor seems to be about the same height as these chassis cross members so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two pieces of plastic across here and then another piece underneath the two to come up to to this the plastic that I'm going to use is actually a piece of scrap from the last build the sprinter again I can't see any point in wasting it it's black, it's the same colour as the rest of it, so I think that I'll probably use this up rather than use plastic card, but you could really use anything that's reasonably stiff. So I'll just get some pieces of this chopped out and then I'll be back. Rather than glue these down, I'm actually going to screw them down because it gives me something which I can take off later for whatever reason if I need to. I'm going to be using the screws which come with these sorts of servos, the, the little self tappers, partly because I've got them and I can't think of anything else I'd use them for. Now what I'm expecting is that if I put this piece here that it's going to be pretty close to an exact fit for that and it actually does seem to be because this is so tight in the coach bolt I think that we'd know if it was causing any strain and I don't think it is so that on mine just happens to be lining up perfectly I'm sure that if I did the job again it could be a millimetre higher, a millimetre lower and then I'd have to adjust in here accordingly but that is pretty good so I'm just going to glue that in place literally in the in the centre of the motor I'm not particularly worried about the motor moving backwards because I don't think it will because of where the nut is relative to what's being moved if it if it does cause me a problem I can always put in something behind the motor but I always want to be able to get the motor out so I'll just glue that activator while I'm at it I think I'll just put a couple of the scrap pieces of plastic which I generated in the last bit of cutting. Get the screws come out. So, just think that I'll put a couple of those in here, either side of the motor, to help keep it in place. I'm trying to keep it so that I can still get the thing out, but as straight as I can. But I really don't want the motor moving around while it's working well as it turns out it was just as well I did screw these down because there would be no way to get the motor out otherwise but having undone them again 
can see that the motor comes out okay. I'm going to be wanting to secure this down using a couple of tie wraps and I think I'm going to take the opportunity while it's off to drill the holes for that. Rather than use two and a half or three millimeter drill bits what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make one and a half millimeter holes but actually make slots so without going too close to the edge hole there hole a couple of meters hole a couple of millimeters down from it there you can see we've got two holes and then just using the draw bit like a saw will give us a nice slot but it's keeping it quite close so I'll just make four holes like that so that's my four slots next thing is to attach a couple of wires on here while it's easy to get to right so that's the wire soldered on so the next thing that we need to do is get it back together and then the cable ties and I think I'll have it so that this bit's underneath that ought to be enough to stop it twisting I'll leave these long in case I need to tighten it up now bearing in mind that I've not got any kind of end stop so I have to be quite careful let's give this its first test I'm just going to use a 3.6 volt battery which came out of an electric screwdriver That's a promising start. Now I did notice that the motor itself was twisting there so I'm going to tighten that up slightly. If I can. That should be a bit tighter. Now I was very keen to continue to use this piece here for driving the bed up and down and last night off camera I actually did some dremeling in order to make it fit here so if I just take you through the bits which I did so so the side profile here you can see how I've taken out some material there and that is to accommodate this bit here and at the other end in terms of side profile it kind of curves around a bit but actually what I've done is I've dremeled a hole for the bolt to go through and I've taken nearly everything out on this bottom bit but I've left enough so that it's keeping these two parts apart so that it still lodges underneath the rail there and doesn't try and come up underneath I took out that bit there and I actually slightly widened it until it wasn't fouling on the shaft so the next thing for me to do is to put this back in here which means taking those bolts out and just move everything along I'm so glad I used bolts and not glue for that this piece simply just goes on and then I'll put the nut back on maybe I should have done things in a slightly different order but I just wanted to demonstrate each part working okay so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of these tops back on just before I do I haven't done much to this but if you if you look at the end profile of how it comes the, you can see there's a piece in the middle here and so far I've trimmed that back level I expect some more will have to come out in the next stage but that's enough for now and while I was doing all of this trimming the way that I did it was I had the bolt in place I had this on I didn't have the nut on motor obviously and I just kept going until this bed would drop down by itself from one end of the travel to the other nicely. So the first thing here is to get that back inside. 
pops in easily enough and then just reattach the back of the bed like so and you can see how this is pretty much all the way down the bolt here does seem to be slightly fouling so before I even test it I'm just going to cut out an area like that that's nice and out of the way now so there's no danger of the nuts hitting it now I'm going to have to be very careful because as I said I haven't got any end stops but using this battery I'm expecting that putting the positive to the positive we're going to have it moving up this is and and this is genuinely the first time I've tried this let's see And that's about as far as you would want it unless you start trimming out other things but in terms of an angle that's not too bad and then just make sure it goes back down again so I'll swap them around Okay, so I think that that's probably where I'll end this video, this first stage. So we've got it working mechanically, and I think that that's going to be fairly reliable actually. It's, it's, it's a very powerful little motor. I think I'm happy enough with the speed. If I put a higher voltage through, like for instance the voltage off the receiver, which is, which is more like 5 volts, I think it will move faster than that but I'm still kind of happy with that speed anyway. I'm going to have to think carefully about whether or not I want to put end stops in and if I do that, how I do it. I'm going to have to think about what power source, am I going to use a speed control, etc. But I'm going to leave all of that to the next video. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video, you found it interesting, perhaps intriguing. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, well maybe think about doing so. And until the next time, thank you very much for watching.